The manga I want to talk about today is called Amagami Sanchi no En Musubi, or in English without my broken Japanese, Matchmaking of the Amagami Household. This is a wonderful romance slash comedy manga written by the assistant of Negi Haruba, which is the author of Gotobu no Hanayome or the quintessential quintuplets. This story takes place in the beautiful city of Kyoto, Japan. We follow Uryu. Uryu is an orphan living at the local orphanage. But as luck would have it, the priest at the local shrine offered to take Uryu in. When Uryu makes his way into the shrine, he halts when he hears some female voices on the other side of a door. Now, Uryu being a sound-minded individual, narrowly stops himself from walking into a precarious situation. Sadly for Uryu though, destiny had other plans as he comes face to face with two massive problems, quite literally. Uryu promptly proceeds to get sprinkled all over with salt to banish his evil ass from the premises, but luckily Uryu does manage to save himself from certain death by talking some things out like a regular human being would. It turns out that the old man who agreed to take Uryu in has pulled the same move my dad used and went out to buy some milk and cigarettes for an undisclosed period of time. The result being that Uryu will now stay at the shrine with the free shrine maidens. Oh the humanity. But now I think this is a good time to introduce the ladies of the hour. Let's start with the eldest of the three, Amagami Yai. Yai may be the oldest, but she is the biggest Arad out of all three of them. Next up we have the youngest of the three sisters. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention they are sisters. That is sure to not cause any problems down the line. I'm certain of that, probably. But as I was saying, meet Amagami Asahi. She is the youngest of the three sisters and can be summed up perfectly in one word, cheeky. She is incredibly cheeky with an energetic personality and a fondness for sports. And finally we have Amagami Yuna, the middle sister. Yuna does not have the best impression of Uryu after the previous incident and is completely against him staying there in any way shape or form. But eventually Uryu is allowed to stay at the shrine and he gets a chance to attend to his one true love, studying. This however gets immediately disturbed by a curious Yai dropping off his shoot on. The universe seems to be totally against Uryu because it causes an unfathomable chain of events that ends with Yai suffocating Uryu in the best way possible and Yuna walking in on them. Uryu gets sprinkled with salt for the second time that day. Now fast forward to later that evening and Uryu finally gets to study. And here comes Asi. Uryu tries to get her to leave but he is forced to allow her to stay after she calls him gay. No, no seriously, that, that's, that's literally what happened, look it up, I'm not kidding. Now, Asahi starts looking for Porn Max, because that's the obvious cause of action in this situation of course. Uryu proceeds to stop her and gets fucked over by the universe once again, leading to him getting sprinkled with salt for the third time that day. That has got to be some kind of record at this point. But later that night, Uryu does find Yuna sleeping and, well, you can guess what happens next. I'll give you a hint, it includes getting fucked by the universe and being sprinkled with salt for the fourth time in one day. But they eventually get to talking and we learn that Uryu wants to become a medicine student at Kyoto University, hence all the studying he really wants to do. Yuna is actually impressed by his ambition and shares her ambition for the shrine with a beautiful story about the legends of the shrine itself. She invites Uryu to pray with them for his academic success. This sparks the start of a beautiful friendship. Except Uryu ruins this prospect by shitting all over the story Yuna told, calling it ridiculous, stupid, etc. D -d this man cannot be serious. But the evening ends with Yuna trying to curse Uryu, quite literally, and if you ask me, he, he kinda deserved it for being a massive ass. But fast forward to the next day and Uryu observes the daily duties of the Shrine Maidens. Yuna has some trouble communicating with a foreign visitor and Uryu senses the opportunity to flex his English skills and helps her out. And surprisingly, Yuna, being an actual decent person, thanks him for the help, like genuinely. But Uryu notices something different about Yuna and it seems her ribbon is missing. This ribbon turns out to be a very dear keepsake of their late mother and Yuna is understandably very troubled by the loss of something precious. The sisters want to pray together for the return of the ribbon but Uryu once more calls her belief stupid and proclaims that not the gods, not anyone else can make things happen. The only one that has the powers to make your dreams come true is you yourself. Yuna and Uryu have a pretty big falling out and Uryu ends up finding the time he wanted to study at last. But luckily for us, Uryu is actually a pretty nice guy at heart and a bit of a tsundere. And Yai finds Uryu missing from his room and is convinced he got taken by spirit. What actually happens is that we see Uryu is actually looking for the ribbon by himself. He even ends up making a little prayer to the gods where Yuna joins him. They make up and Yuna decides Uryu deserves a chance to live with them after all. They are joined by a worried Yai and Asahi when a starfall occurs. 
In the middle of this magical event, they all share a moment as the lost ribbon finds its way back to Yuna. But the more mystical event is that the old man that invited Uryu actually came back, unlike my dad. He explains that he invited Uryu to live with them because he has his eyes set on the prospect of an heir for the shrine. He himself is getting pretty old after all. Uryu reluctantly and pretty much rhetorically asks who he is supposed to marry to become the heir, and the answer, of course, is right in front of his eyes. He will marry one of the three sisters to inherit the shrine. And thus begins a tale of love and miracles featuring the three shrine maidens of Kyoto. Now, this manga really has it all. It has a captivating story, well-written characters, gorgeous art and an active community. If you enjoyed the quintessential quintuplets, you will most certainly enjoy this manga as well. This video only covers the first chapter of the manga as an introduction, and as of me recording this video, the manga is still very much ongoing, with 86 chapters out right now, with no end in sight yet. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel. It would really help get my channel featured in the YouTube algorithm, and you would never have to miss another video. With all that being said, I hope each and every one of you will have a wonderful day, and keep being awesome, and I will see you all in the next video.